Hi there, and welcome to the ATS Podcast with me, Will Brown, and John Soulsby, where we break down chunks of health and fitness information into bite-sized pieces, remove a bunch of the noise, and just leave what's relevant. Uh, today we are on episode 28, uh, continuing in our macronutrient trifecta segments. Uh, we are talking mm-hmm. about carbohydrates, the most demonized macronutrient of them all. I think they've all had their sh- fair share of the spotlight. I think they've all, yeah, they've all had their time. At one point, fats were like the, the devil. Apart from protein, I don't feel like protein ever gets a bad rep. As, yeah, apart from maybe, like as you were saying before, of like the destroys your kidneys shenanigans. Yeah, maybe everyone going vegan, but then even then, if you go vegan, you're still eating yeah. protein. Like no one's go, no one's saying don't eat car, don't eat protein before bed, bro. Like maybe your parents thinking that protein supplements are a gateway to roids. <laughs> what's yeah? What's next? Steroids? You're like yeah, yeah, maybe. Um. So yeah, carbohydrates. Uh, main macronutrient to do with. Energy, super important for exercise, super important for regular brain function. Again, ketosis is very po- or ketogenic diets are very popular. Yeah. Um, in terms of how they break down, if I recall, there's th- three types. You've got your kind of simples, your middles, and your complex. Uh, we kind of alluded to the idea of stuff being in chains last episode in terms of like how they're molecularly structured. A chain, just imagine a line, like not very complicated, just one links to another. It's not made into circular or other shaped molecules. So breaking one chain, eventually, like again, if you just cut a rope in half, you've got two half ropes. Whereas if you like have to work your way through a knot to then cut into it, it takes longer. Um, yeah, you got simple sugars, again, various sugary stuff. You've got your middles, which are like the maltodextrins and various things, if I recall. And then you've got your complex, which is starches and cellulose and glycogens and stuff and pectins and things. Um, <clears throat> carbohydrate is non-essential. You can live without it. However, your body will manufacture it. Like, if you do not provide it, your body will... I mean, it literally... It's... Like a neogenesis, I think. That's, that's the word. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the word for it. Like your your um, liver is it your liver? Your liver will literally start breaking down fat sources and turning it into stuff. Or is it kidneys? Or is it kidneys? <clears throat> the um the uh, as much as that sounds like a really good idea, in terms of like, oh, so you mean like if I just stop eating carbs, like my body will start getting rid of my fat stores and turning it into glycogen? Uh, I mean, it will work. It's liver and sorry, it's liver and kidneys, so we're both right. So, uh, it's like yeah, that that will happen. However, number one, it happens painfully slowly. Emphasis on very uncomfortable. <laughs> number two, that also means that you essentially are willing to eliminate dietary carbohydrates for ever, <laughs> cause also for for no reason. For essentially no reason, yeah. And you're like, cool. Like, again, ketogenesis stuff does work. However, the likelihood long-term effects or long-term success of those kind of diets is pretty low because of a lot of the weight loss or scale weight loss being made up of uh, the initial drop in glycogen stores and water retention. Because, again, part of... Clio- I mean, the second part of the word, hydrate... Um, plenty of or a lot of the carbohydrate functions functions a lot of the carbohydrate stuff with regards to storage and how it's moved around is paired with water yeah. it also affects how much water you hold on to i'm sure everyone's had one of those one of those days where you eat a very carb heavy carb heavy meal and your following fluid intake seems to go entirely to your face you are extremely bloated and just very kind of puffy, which can happen. <clears throat> also, super yeah. useful in lifting weights, cause lifting weights and like moderate intensity exercise, because glycogen is a thing. Um, yeah, and I think like the so the reason your body produces glucose is because your brain also uses it as an energy. So I've always just found it a bit like counterintuitive to be like, no, nah, I'm not having any. 
Yeah, your per your brain's like almost preferred source of fuel. So, and yeah, it's like one of the only ones I can use. So it's in like why? Um, it's the only I think people have found carb-free diets helpful is if you really struggle with eating too many carbs. But I would always argue that that's an issue you probably should address rather than kind of stick your head in the sand, not eat any for a while and do some weight. Yeah. For your long, long term like lifestyle and health like you probably want to have carbohydrates in your diet so yep the um i think we've touched on it in other episodes so like one of the reasons or one of the things i always love is like where where lifting weights like this absolute chimpanzee adjacent activity that we've participated in for i mean next year is going to be like 50 percent of my life um yep has these like sneakily beneficial things that I hadn't really thought about and it's like the the kind of benefits of symptoms and like aid in minimizing of symptoms in like type 2 pre like type 2 diabetics and pre-diabetic people mm -hmm. cause in a very simplistic way type 2 diabetes so not the one that's an auto is it type, type 1's an autoimmune right it's where like you're I believe so yeah you're Oh, come on, Will. Um, yeah, it's an it's autoimmune disease. disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As everyone clicks Wikipedia. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, for the type 2 stuff, because it's essentially a kind of perfect storm of decreased insulin sensitivity, like absolutely wild blood, blood sugar levels and stuff, something that regulates blood sugar levels in the blood a lot is lifting weights and exercise. But specifically lifting weights just cause... Yeah. It's very glycogen intensive, especially in the kind of hypertrophy rep range. That's like the primary fuel source. We've talked yep. about energy systems a bit in the creatine episode where we were talking about phosphocreatine and stuff. Yep. So having, I don't know what the process is where I can't remember where glycogen is broken down into ATP because everything gets broken down into ATP. Um, Krebs cycle or um, no, part of the Krebs cycle. Glycolysis is also what it's called. Glycolysis, that's the word. But yeah. It's that like, um, big chain, you can go down a straight line and then it goes in a big circle and you chuck lactic acid out one end and pyruvate and all this shenanigans. Nice. But yeah, the fact that like lifting weights, because it's so glycogen intensive, can really help regulate blood sugar levels in pre-diabetic people to the point where they can recede from being pre-diabetic into being kind of like, you know, dangerously high <laughs> yeah. and then yeah. hopefully get their hopefully get their shit together and become like you know not pre-diabetic and not even close type of thing but still yeah. it's pretty good that alongside like it might actually become like a potential health recommendation for people who are pre-diabetic of just like cool we're gonna take these medicines to help ma manage it but you're also gonna start lifting weights because that will help significantly manage it and like yeah. it's pretty cool like i like the idea that lifting weights is it's healthy yeah, it's, it's healthy, but it also can be used in, like, a kind of clinical medical intervention as part of, like, a solution to someone's actual health concerns. Yeah, I feel, especially for, like, a health concern, it's not just, like, frailty-related, as in, like... Yeah, 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 yeah. ...getting old and weak, therefore lifting weights would help, or you are have a hamstring injury and it would help. It's like, no, this is actually, like, completely... Mm -hmm. Like, almost you wouldn't initially think that it's relevant. Yeah, yet again, folks, that one weird trick that nobody wants you to know is just lifting weights. <laughs> yeah. That, that's it. Um, yeah, uh, it's pretty useful in energy intensive activities, long steady state cardio, or long intense cardio. You cycle a lot. I see you all like yeah. pounding those energy gels and shit. Yeah, they. <laughs> you know what? Actually, some of them taste alright. Some of them are actually horrendous, but. Some mm. of the textures on them are like <laughs> nice. It's like, like eating a kind of few... glue. Or I mean, even worse, some of it's like this is just like bogies in a little container. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like never having one of those ones again. That's um, that's fucking rough. Some of them are absolute rocket fuel though. Like there's there's one I had that had oh I want to get this is again just trying to remember something that I had on a four hour cycle. So but it was had like 25 milligrams of caffeine in it as well or maybe 50 yeah that's pretty wild along with like 
50 grams of carbs, absolute rocket fuel. Yeah, I was going to say, so unlike when we talked about the protein thing, where proteins digest at different rates, but even whey is, like, reasonably slow digesting relative to carbohydrates, like, you can kind of gum carbohydrates and they get in you pretty quickly, especially if they're very simple sugars. Like, um, a lot of workout supplement carbohydrates are based around being... I can't remember which one it is. Is it, um... Oh, come on, Will. The fuck is it? Like, the... It's the one that is essentially... Like, is it dextrose? That's essentially... That is literally the same form yeah. as blood sugar. Like, it is literally yeah. just straight mainline blood sugar. Pretty much, yeah. So, it, like... And it, absorption can even start, like, <clears throat> on your tongue. Yeah. But you you, ca- you could theoretically just rub it into your gums and it would yeah. start getting in there. <laughs> so, here we are. This So, this energy gel has... I mean, I don't know why it's got amino acids in it, but it seems to sell every supplement ever. So it's got some amino acids in it. It's got 60 milligrams of sodium and 40 milligrams of caffeine. And that's pretty wild. Let's, let's see 50 grams of carbs. I don't know. That's literally that's literally like a coffee's worth of... That's almost a... Re- yeah. That's actually probably like closer to a Red Bull, like a small Red Bull's yeah. worth of caffeine and sugar. And their like, dosage <laughs> recommendation is take one gel 50 minutes before uh, mm-hmm. competition and then one gel every 30 to 45 minutes so you're literally banging that much caffeine like it's a lot of caffeine it's like that's it's like a, a lot, mon- like, that's like a monster energy drink over a long race yeah but it's 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 rocket fuel <laughs> yeah i imagine like in the midst of stuff especially when you start like feeling feeling the hit like things hit and stuff when you're really yeah. burning through stuff if you bang a gel you are going yeah, it's 100 calories into every packet, so it can't be 50 grams of carbs, because that would be 200. Mm-hmm. It must be, 20, it must be 20, like 20, 25. That's kind of wild. But yeah, yeah, carbohydrates are not the devil. Um, You can have them as part of a regular diet completely fine. If you want to remove them from your diet for whatever reason, I mean, you can. If you really want, what you probably want to do is just stop eating shite. Like, you could still have vegetables, whole grains, that kind of thing, and you'll probably be fine. Whole grains have their own beneficial stuff with reducing, like, cholesterol, helping get your fiber intake up. Fiber is super important. Um, Yeah, overall, they're pretty handy to do. Can you... Is, is, like, have food and drink companies essentially spent the last several decades making the most palatable and desirable and easy to eat foods that make it incredibly easy for you to buy loads of them and overeat yes have they also put them absolutely everywhere because everyone's told them for years that they want them everywhere yes (laughs) is that your fault no however it is a point to consider against you in terms of when you're trying to diet and you're like i just can't stop eating kit kats like it is hard because they are literally, they, ha- they have decades and decades of research into how to be as tasty as possible and as easy to get as possible. <laughs> like, if you, ever, if you ever think people who sell, like, the first hit of Coke for free and then it's the good stuff and then from then on you're on, like, the stuff that's cut with baby powder. Like, you should see what the fucking folk in those, like, Kit Kat companies get up to. Like, um. it is designed to be, ed- like, Oreos are designed that you eat the whole packet. Like, that's the point. Well, like, that's why they come in big sleeves of three now. Yeah, that's why they come in those big sleeves with only one lid. So you open them, and you're like, I mean, it'd be a waste. Just leave them to go my, dry. My arse is resealable. Really yeah, done. exactly. Absolutely not. Like, they are 100% scientifically backed by millions of bucks to be as edible as possible. <laughs> Again, same thing with other, like, takeaway pizzas and stuff. That's why that whole, like... Oh. salty combo is so ridiculous like they are just there's like boffins who think up exactly the right chemical compounds and ratios and things to make them as edible as po- as edible as possible does that mean you can never be healthy no however it is a point against you in terms of it's it is not as easy as some people may make it out to be because of those reasons you have literally got some sort of Rocky IV Soviet scientist-esque team working against you <laughs> in the Kit Kat labs in fucking <laughs> in fucking yeah, 
Belgrave or wherever. In that in that Twix factory where they do one finger in one factory. And one <laughs> yeah, finger. correct, exactly. They've got the R and D department essentially <laughs> trying to like work out the exact amount of which sugars to put in the caramel to make them as edible as possible. So you buy a whole pack. Just thinking, interestingly enough, I'm quite surprised those caffeine loaded sugar gels haven't made it to powerlifting because everyone's slamming like sweets in that to keep their carbs off in their powerlifting comp. Just Maybe buy one of those gels fifteen before fifty minutes before your squat, you'd be off. I mean, I've got a comp coming up. I might try it. I mean, I'd try one beforehand, but yes, absolutely not. Yolo. Um, <laughs> I'll fucking do it. Um, you send me a link, I'll get on it. Uh, especially because yeah. I hate fucking, I hate eating food the day of a comp or like anywhere after the first like thirty minutes of weigh. But after weighing, I hate eating food. Yeah. Which is just PTSD yeah. from comps that only had one toilet. So I was just like, my diet will be entirely liquid. So if I really need to, I can just pee outside. Burns gym, fucking hilarious. Yeah, it's literally just like <laughs> the. Uh, I know folk will literally eat ice cream yeah. syrup out of the fucking yeah. tube, <laughs> but no, not have... energy gel <laughs> designed like... for carbohydrate intake. <laughs> and like. Yeah, I've just thought of this, like, yeah, but as you see, people have, like, all this, like, stupid shit, and you're like, but this is just one gel, and also it's got all the caffeine in it you'd ever need. Yeah, I, genu I genuinely might do that this time. I'll, I'll see how it goes. Right. Uh, do we have anything else to say on carbohydrates, and then we can go on to fats? Nah, not really. Dope. See you in the next one, folks. Bye. Uh -huh.